Hey, what's going on out there, guys? It's going to be Donnie coming to you from Panku Style Massage, Japan. I um, just got done doing a little bit of exercise and everything, so I'm under armor, not trying to show off and everything, but just trying to get back in shape. 2020 is coming, even though I don't set all those those goals for the next year, kind of roll it into the next year. But um, one of my things is my kids are getting older, so they're about to get back and uh, get started on the uh, uh, jujitsu and everything. So I'm um, just, you know, doing a lot of stuff. I even had my board on my uh, had my had my lacrosse stick out and everything, which a lot of guys give me crap about because it's old ass lacrosse stick. But this was one of my, even though I played defense in uh, high school, um, I, I still had some short sticks and everything. So lacrosse is, 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 is still a thing. So still got it. You never forget the skills and everything. So that's just that. So I'm going to get my kids on a lacrosse and, uh, you know, show them how to play and everything. Shout out to my, my guy out there, uh, Terry Boyce and uh, Gene White. And those are two of the, um, two of the, uh, influential uh you know uh, men in my life growing up and everything so just kind of you know just getting right into it and everything so this podcast actually i finally got some finally got some questions and everything in so i mean go ahead. i got i got the um i got the uh podcast the uh, pink star podcast instagram set up and everything so you guys can go ahead on the uh, instagram and drop the questions there easier than email i know like for the business stuff again email only uh, but podcast is a little bit more looser because it's extracurricular. So I don't mind if you guys send the questions there. If you're not into all the emailing stuff, I know you new guys, new cats don't even know email later unless you work for office, military, or somewhere that utilize the email. Most guys don't do email. So Panko Style Podcast on the Instagram, and you can uh, drop your questions there. And in the, in the uh, when I'll, I'll ask, you know, I'm going to shoot you know podcast in three or four hours like I did this today, and um, you can drop your questions right there in the box. You can send them if, you, if they're a little bit personal. Um, you can send them, um, you know, well, this, this is going to be out there, so it's not really personal, but you can send them via the message and I'll get to them and everything. So I want to get the, I'm going to do the questions at the front half, not the end, uh, because, you know, my analytics are saying most people only tune in for like the first like 15, 20 minutes out of the, if I do an hour or something like that. So I'm going to get all the juicy stuff in the, in the first, first 15 minutes. Um, so this first uh, set of questions I got actually is three. And they're multi-layered questions. Pretty good, pretty good stuff from my guy Alan Newsom out of uh, Georgia. Uh, Alan Newsom, if you guys know, runs Bridge Moto and uh, runs uh, Togi Techniques. Same two companies that are you know same same you know same run the same, but Bridge Moto is uh, the safety gear, and all you guys know about that. Togi Techniques is the uh, is the shop portion of that. So anyway, getting right into Alan's questions here. Uh, Alan asked, uh, "Let me see first. A- X. I'm from Baltimore, so people say X or X, whatever how you want to say. He's asking a question. So, uh, Alan X, um, what are your top three personal car projects that are your pro- that are priority after you know after family and customs, of course, uh, to get fully turnkey drivable in 2020? First question right there. So, my first, uh, my top three um, personal car projects to get. You know, I hate the word project, because projects seem like you're never really getting done with stuff like that. So of course my number one car when I get it up because um, drifting is what got me kind of a little bit of notoriety here in Japan and what legit- legitimized my shop. Um, even though I'm, like I said I'm going into grip and I got the pro drift license, so I want to get the grip license. So uh, number one car when I get going is my uh, get going and that's not currently going is uh, my S13, which you know it I just it's just missing engine and engine and transmission. So the car is already ready, got cage, is all fully fully thing. So just got to put an engine in there. I've been talking to. Um, I've been talking to uh, Brendan over at uh, Secret Monkey Garage about uh, getting a uh, Barra. So I, I'm, I'm not going away from the RBs, but I, I want to do something a little bit different. It's not a secret about it. Um, so I got a Barra, a, a Barra engine, Ford Barra engine, the inline six, four liter, uh, coming shortly for that. So that probably be up by uh, by the springtime or something like that, depending on how we go. Um, as far as cars, this is not running again. Cars that are running, they're running, they can, they can drive right now. So I'm not running the Cappuccino. I'm going to get that uh, done uh, because that actually has two years JCI on it. So it would be cool as hell to drive around a 1J, two, a 1J swap Cappuccino for the next two years and terrorize people and everything. It still has JCI, and it will be a normal car with a, with a 1J in it. So I'm going to get that up and going. And then as far as other cars, I'm thinking, uh, that's not running right now. Um, let me see, man. Just kind of going through my head right now. Um, I would like to get my R33, my R33 restored because it, it's it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the panels are battered, uh, but the actual frame and structure stuff is all there. But it just needs new brakes, 
um, new rotors, pads, and all that good stuff. Uh, there's no engine transmission, diff, or nothing in it. It's pretty much just a rolling shell, and I'm going to get that um, up and going and everything. And that's just my my personal top three I want to get going. And then I'll, I'll say like a, a bonus one would be getting my DR30 going, which, you know, I got that car, like a lot of guys know, I got that car when I was still in the military. Um, it was going to be my take-home car when I was in the military and everything. And then that car, just, I got it. It had a blown engine when I got it. It was kind of a bad uh, deal. Um, you know, the person I went through to get the car didn't, you know, I paid a fee to have things checked out and it wasn't checked out. It was just ordered. And, you know, that, that was my, it was my fault for not really looking into it and everything. But um, I want to get that car cool because this is an older car. It's 1983, same year as me. So it's kind of cool to have a car from the same year you were born. That's crazy, you know, to think that, you know, I'm 36, 1983. When I came out, my mom or whatever, that car was coming out of the factory. I forgot the actual month of the car to see if who was older than me at the car. But at the same time, it was born the same year, 1983. And then, like, I, I go my whole life, you know, through all these moments, through all, you know, to middle school, high school, all these moments that you go through. And there's this car out there that's born the same year you are born. And then you just... You come to Japan and you link up, man. It's kind of special. And, like, you know, a lot of guys, man, it's kind of cool, man, you get an older car because it makes you think, like, if you get a 1970-something and you're, that car is older than you, that car was out and doing this thing you weren't even thought about. Your mom and dad didn't even meet, you know, you want you weren't you want to throw it and then you get that car it's a 1970 something and it's like it's a lot of history with last owners their life and everything so we we guys out there look at look at cars a little bit different and things like that and it goes uh goes you know goes together so that's why cars hold a special thing a special place in our hearts and it just makes it it's more it's more it's not an a to b thing uh for us we kind of do we have our a to b cars and i'm, I'm at that point now where i got so many cars where i do have a to b cars where i just I just we make sure they got maintenance and fuel, and I drive them. Um, don't no modifications, but it's hard. It's a hard thing to do because you tend to modify things a lot to get into that stuff and everything. So, um, the next question right here that Alan asked: um, If you were, if you were to build a 59, 59.9 uh, second Sukuba car, or for the Japanese guys that there's Goju Goju Q10 Q Q Q uh, second car for Sukuba car from the one you currently own, which would it be and why? Without a question, man, it's going to be the S2000. Um, everybody's seen the S2000. I actually reacquired that back from Raman Abana in Japan, a gracious guy who gave me that car back. I mentioned a little bit ago on the podcast that I sold the car to Raman, and uh, I needed the money to, like, you know, make things happen. Raman bought it, and then he really didn't have it because he has S2000 himself. Didn't have really a need for the car, and I, um, I you know, I was seeing it a few times. I went there, and then he kind of, I guess he seen me looking at the car, and uh, he was like, you know, he had he had just bought an he got an NSX Type R that he's selling, and uh, which selling for a high price. Where if it doesn't sell, or whatever, if it sells, cool. Then he got a Testarossa for like uh, two weeks, and he he, he had that two thousand side because it didn't have a canopy on it. So he's like, hey man, do you want this back or whatever? You know, you just you know pay me back or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'll take it back. Not not even a not even all. Oh, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So I took it right back, and. Uh, Got that, got it. Uh, they, they took the turbo kit off of it, so I'm actually going to go. It's actually cool they took it off because the turbo kit that was on there, I re, I fixed it from eBay, and it was a crap kit. So I got my build my own manifold um, this time and uh, running things a little bit different. So I'll be getting with Haltech. You guys know my Haltech dealer. Get that on there. It'll be a, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do factory tuning, man, because a lot of guys, when you get into this, um, this uh, venture of cars, it's like you, you see, you feel like you got to be everything aftermarket, but you got to look like, look, start low level. Go for your car builds, and you'll see that there's a lot of actually stock OEM parts out there that on one car is normal, but on another car is an upgrade. So you could take, you know, OEM turbo from Mitsubishi, OEM turbo from a Nissan, SR20, uh, ball bearing, uh, S15 turbo. You could take all these different turbos uh, from stock applications, depending on, you know, what you got to deal with some turbos. You know, you got the stupid Veep, the stupid uh, suit clips and things like that. You don't want to make it harder for yourself. So pick something that's, a, you know, it got a, a decent downpipe, things like that. And you can work it in there. But S2000 is definitely going to be my car that's going to be at or below. Um, it's going to be at or below the, um, uh, what is it? It's going to be at or below the uh, 59 sec, 59.99 second uh, uh, setup for, for the Sukub and stuff like that. So I'm definitely looking to build that car up and get there and everything and definitely break below 59 seconds with that car. So um, for those who are playing like Gran Turismo and stuff like that, I played GT5 and GT5 had the Amuse S2000, which I've always had a thing for S2000 since GT2 that was on the cover. And the S2000, um, 
S2000, you know, it was something that was, you know, they, they still, they're holding their value. They're going up. They're not really coming down. So they, what is it, man? They, I just never, it was something I knew I can, I can get eventually with me opening a shop and like, you know, coming into a little bit extra money and stuff like that. Once the business gets uh, good to go. But S2000 was not a car that I see myself owning like in the next 10 years. And then I got it, you know, about uh, shit, five years ago now, almost about four or five years ago, I got that car. And five years, it was five years I got that car go, and um, so it's kind of cool to have that's two thousand, and uh, definitely again to get it back is definitely I can't resell it, got to keep it, and uh, you know put some arrow in it and stuff like that and see where it goes from there. But the the, key, the purpose is I'm going to go turbo because, um, you know I just like the turbo, and uh, from playing the Muse S two thousand on uh, GT five, it's just kind of something about it, man. Even though the actual Muse one didn't, I, I believe it didn't have a turbo. Uh, they were they were going to make a turbo, but they they made it NA. So I think the real NA Amuse S2000 is actually NA. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'll make a turbo, uh, but it'll be a low response uh, or, or a quick low and response setup. I'm not I'm not going to put a big gaudy turbo in there. I'm not doing drag racing. I'm not doing you know high highway pulls. Um, I'm just going to be a really responsive. Just give a little bit of boost over stock. So I mean around about maybe 320, 340. That's more than enough power. I'm not trying to, um, you know, do anything crazy um, with the stock engine. That is an AP1 stock valve train. So you guys know out there that the AP1 is they have issues with the uh, valves cracking and the seats cracking, uh, stuff like that. So a lot of guys upgrade to the AP2 setup. So, um, you know, you definitely don't want to get into it, even though the the, a the, the AP1 is a very, a very, very stout engine out of the factory as long as you keep up on the maintenance, as long as you don't do anything stupid to it. And as you guys know, it spawned it spawned and pretty much developed the uh, K-Series engine, which now guys are taking the K-Series engine to 2024 and putting that into the S3000. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of cool to see how the evolution goes and how engines that are earlier, um, you know, spawn new engines. And the guys out there who don't know, the S2000, um, S2000 uh, for, for, I think, I don't know. Does I want to say like the? But if you look it up, for I think so many years, S two thousand was like pound for pound the number one power rate ratio uh, vehicle. As far as like the car itself, the engine output, things like that for the engine size, and you know, so that was a pretty cool deal. And in, in the times I put down a Nurburgring and things like that, um, you know, the S two thousand is an awesome car. Um, you know, a lot of guys are buying cars now and doing like the doing the what is it the stance stuff, which. It's not my thing. Uh, I'm not into it. Not into really making a car undrivable, undraceable. Uh, but the S2000 makes um, it, it. It can out S2000 is a car where you can just drive it out the box and get, get get good results, even with stock suspension. If you take away the fenders and everything, you look at the car from the front. It looks like it's designed like an F1 car. The steering and everything is ahead of the engine. The electronic pump, electronic not pump, electronic um, electronic. Uh, what is it? Um, God damn, I'm drawing blank, blank. Guys, been up for a long time today. But electronic uh, steering rack and everything up there it makes you know it, it gets rid of the your coolant, it gets rid of the power steering bowling over and things like that, and it it, it feels pretty good. So it, it's a car that was definitely developed uh, a little bit ahead of its time. Like, well, it didn't, it's not ahead of its time, but it was. You don't need much for the car. You can get in the car and drive, and the car is a grip car. So you, you see a few guys out there, you know, doing drifting with it. I've, I've drifted mine a few times, but it's it's not a car I want to take. I don't want to change that car from drift to, uh, you know, to from drifting, uh, from grip aspects to drifting and everything. So that's going to be the deal, and I'm definitely looking to get there. And that, that'll probably, um, I'll probably depending on well, we we're gonna go down. Me and Alan, who's asking these questions, we're gonna go down to Zakuba together. So if everything goes out, I got an Evo one that I want to match up with his Evo, his Evo four. So we built their Evo and the Evo one together and everything, and it'll be kind of cool. We'll be on the track together in the same group to have fun with each other and uh, run it like that. So if I don't bring the Evo, then I'll have the S two thousand and it'll be there and everything. And uh, let me see, let me see. And the last, the last question of Alan is he X three. What are the three drift and grip? Hold on, so let me see. What are I got? Just like little, little like point five font that I printed out here. So it's saying, uh, what are the three drift and three grip tracks you have you haven't driven that you would like to drive in Japan? All right, so for drifting, number one would be uh, Mi, uh, Mihan. Um, just just you know, with all the hype behind you know pink style team burst, prior Nakamura and everything, I want to go down there and drift Mihan. Um, Bihoku because I watch out, out of all of older older drift videos, uh, Bihoku is the one that um, 
it's you know a lot of people wrecked there in that entry is really crazy and uh, a lot of people wrecked there and then finally i think um it, it's, it's kind of this is like my i wish i could but i can't because it's, it's a solar panel now but seca hills seca hills is another track that i watched a lot and um of course you guys know uh ueno was like this is that was like you know his stomping ground there and that track is now the you seca hills is still there if you look on a google maps but it's covered with um uh, solar panels i guess you know it wasn't um a lot of guys don't realize with drift tracks all drift tracks are not popular in japan um depending on you know if guys know more togi and things like that or just the location um some owners i don't know i don't know for sure but i believe the owners of Seca hills are getting a little bit older and they were just looking kind of to shut it down they weren't making as much money and uh, they shut Seca hill down because um the solar panel stuff became if you're going if you travel japan now you'll notice when you look off to the side of the roads solar panels dominating like the open space so solar panels is becoming a big thing in japan Seca hill sold the track um other another track that um you know sold it was kind of actually you know, my next question going to be grip which is uh sendai highlands i should have went to the last event but i didn't go to the last event before they closed um because sendai highlands had um, got really really damaged uh from the uh, earthquake damage and they, they didn't want to repair it um but yeah sika hills was like the last one and then going into the grip of course i just mentioned um sendai highlands um i didn't go there central circuit um Central Circuit is really big with, uh, they got Zero Yawn, a lot, they doing it on a straight drag. If you look on uh, YouTube, Central Circuit has a drag thing there, which I'm probably going to build a car up and take there, even though drag is not really my thing. I mean, uh, it's not really my thing. So I'll probably make a car of a ridiculous power just to go there and mess around and run like 10 seconds when everybody else is running like, you know, eight sevens and sixes or whatever. Uh, so Central Circuit, and then I would think the last, Suzuka, Suzuka for sure, man. Definitely want to get to Suzuka and, uh, you know, you know, a lot of time on uh, Gran Turismo, Suzuka East, uh, with the short circuit and everything, doing drifting there, both drifting and grip. So Suzuka can go for both, actually. Uh, D1 uh, does a little around there and everything. And then, um, you know, for grip, I definitely want to get there. And there's a few other. I'm definitely going to get around. But again, um, like a lot of guys with the business stuff, um, Alan can contest to it because Alan, we talk a lot. You know, we kind of, um, one thing about it, you know, we all, you know, uh, a lot of guys bottle up like, you know, men, you know, men supposed to keep things inside and things like that. And that's, you know, that's how things are, are, are generally spoken and, and dealt with. But you got to kind of confide in somebody. You don't have to talk, you know, be careful who you're talking to because you don't want to talk to people. And they'd be like running around, running around talking about your things. Alan talked to me about his confidential things that I talked to Alan about his confidential his business stuff and everything. So it's kind of cool to have somebody out there that you can uh, talk to. And it's, it's just, um, you know, in this life, in this life, we, we, we tend to, um, we tend to start blocking people out, blocking people, pushing people away and, uh, things like that. So you just want to, it's nice to find some out there that's genuinely about, you know, your, your progress and, and vice versa. You want to help, you want to help those guys uh, succeed and everything. So this is a really good thing out there. Alan Newsom, awesome guy and everything. Thanks for the questions. Um, so, um. Uh, not really a quick, this, and that's all the questions I got. So I'm not going to BS. I wrote some little notes here from some other stuff I want to cover. You can't read it cause it's white. Uh, but, um, some of the, uh, you know, I was talking to, again, speaking of Alan, uh, you know, Alan, Alan, uh, Newsom, uh, one of the guys I spoke to, and I was going to hold this off till he got here and everything, but it's not, you know, I'm making a known thing because it's, 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 I've been asked a few times and actually I'm going to do, I'm going to pick people who I want to do. So, you know, a lot of guys know I came into the business and everything. I stopped racing in 2000, well, stopped drifting racing heavily in 2015 to, to take the money and fund, fund my, um, and, uh, fund the, what is it? Uh, the shop and everything. Uh, so from the shop, you know, not being able, not being able to race a lot, not being able to drift a lot. It is, I, I set back a lot and I analyze how things are going. Um, I dropped pretty much all the sponsors that I had. Uh, I'll, I think all of the sponsors and partners I had, I think, pretty much yeah if i really think about it all the guys that if i look at my last race suit i had of all those guys i had i don't believe i signed a contract for any single one of those guys so to me like i said before my my sponsor thing my sponsor if you look it up um you know questions questions about how to get sponsors if you look my page is one of my one of my my like my my highest videos viewed with you know it's not a lot of views but it's one of my highest videos i talk about you know what about sponsors jason jason fullerton uh, we, even though we didn't sign a contract, you know, we, we, we had a, we had a pretty good verbal agreement, you know, 
um, just kind of run his course because, you know, my thing is he, he provides the DOT helmets and we need the S S S S F I F I A helmets. And they really just, the moto helmets just really don't work for the car stuff. So it's not, we don't have bad blood or anything. It's just that, you know, the, the, the gear that he's providing, I can still use, but, um, for the competition stuff, Allen at British Moto is my guy for FISFI helmets, gears, and stuff like that. So, again, there's no bad blood between us. We still speak here and there uh, online. Um, the uh, sponsor thing, man, I, again, I dropped, I had, you know, I had a good amount of sponsors, you know. And, well, you know, and uh, sponsors, they weren't giving me shit, man. You know, they weren't giving me anything. So I'm not gonna be straight about that. I was paying, I was paying everything you see in your head. Maybe they, a few guys chucked me some, some, some motor, some, some promotional stuff here and there, but it wasn't really towards the car that I was like competing in. So everything, like a lot of guys out there with the sponsor stuff, you know, you, um, you, you, everybody wants to get sponsors. Like everybody's Mishimoto. Mishimoto is one of the easiest ones to get. You just do a figure eight, you send some pictures and they'll hook you up with some gear. So the sponsor thing is, is, um, you're still going to pay money. It doesn't matter how many you got, unless you got that one that's going to give you a full ride. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know the specifics about people's dealings, but you just see you guys have four rides. And when that uh, four ride pulls out, um, everything kind of goes, goes up. I mean, you know, it's public knowledge, you know, and it's they're they're you know, I don't know their, 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 I don't know their relationship. I'm going to speak on it because it's out there, but like, you know, guys like rapper Dan Savage, Savage and the guys over at Siki, you know, rapper Dan, I think he had won, he had won the Pro 2 championship. And then a couple of years later or the year after, um, Siki decided to pull out a Formula Drift because they just weren't making, for the amount of money they were putting in, or James Evans over there, they just weren't making enough um, money back. And you, that's a business, man. You know, James is coming out of the pocket. That money is for James's family and whatever else he has to do and to keep his business running. So you can't fault him for pulling out. Um, I think, though, Dan pretty much disappeared after that happened. So, I mean, you know, it was a good thing while it lasted. You know, that was all around. I think I don't know how long that thing lasted, but it's like, I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to bring a drama. That's just an example of, um, you know, in that situation, Dan was a good, Dan not was, Dan still is a good driver. Uh, but, you know, he had the back in the sick. He show up driving things like that. He had the cars that were provided by James Evans. Again, I don't know the specifics. I've been I, I I'm not one of those guys. Like, oh, I'm not in the States. So I don't know what's going on. I see shit online. These are my friends and everything. I see things out there. I don't I don't follow it heavily because, again, it doesn't really it doesn't concern or affect me until I'm at to I actually enter into FD, which I do plan on doing uh, pro too soon. I'm not as popular as the, the Adam LZs and. As far as YouTube stuff and things like that, I've been in the game longer. I'll put my put my skills against anybody out there. Any this like this this whole fad going around about YouTube drifters. Like I was doing that shit before it was even a YouTube drifter fad. These guys are still in elementary school, so I mean that's not even a, that's not even a question. I mean, you want to come drift over here, come drift over here, and we can see how good you are and everything because that those big sweeping wide drifts and stuff like that. When you come to Japan, it's a little bit more technical. Um, a little bit, a little different style of drifting, and it's the same thing. When a lot of Japanese guys, even myself, if I go back to the states, you go drifting at stadiums. Like I ain't drifted bank, I ain't drifted bank with a high power car. Well, I never, I've been on the bank before at uh, Old Dominion Speedway, but I, that was a KA Turbo, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at that level, so uh, of actually completing the bank. So I've never, if I go back right now. I would spend like probably a day or two just getting used to drifting on bank entries and stuff like that. It's just not, they don't have uh, oval figure eight tracks here in Japan. Um, so it just, you know, it's just a different thing and everything, different styles. Europe is different than Australia. Australia is different than NZ. NZ is different in the States. The States is different in Brazil. Brazil is different than Germany and all the different places. So um, drift, the drifting is going to, styles are going to be determined based on like, you know, what's around and everything. So kind of like, Went off topic a little bit on that just to kind of get on this topic right here. I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. So I uh, kind of got a, uh, the reason I brought that whole sponsor thing up is uh, for my business, the way I'm going to run things is I'm going to, you know, pick people that I think are good representations of my company. Does has nothing to do with before I even announce this person right here has nothing to do with uh, color has nothing to do with you know religion and things like that. It's just you know from personal talking, the way he support me before I even asked him to, to to support me and everything. The way he looks out and stuff like that and hits me up and they give me hits up on things certain things that uh that might concern me and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, it's just when you pick 
who you want to represent your company. You should be careful about that. And my thing is, I'm not just going. I'm not going to put up their sponsor program just to give somebody ten percent off just so they can put a sticker on my car because that's not really support. Um, I I sold myself fifteen twenty percent to people. Put all these stickers on my car. Um, again, like I brought up before, when I started my business, um, I, I sent an email out to all my guys like, hey, I'm about to start a business. So I'm going to be taking a hiatus. And it was like, whatever. I didn't get an email back, which means I'm not even, it doesn't even matter. It's not, it's not, I'm not even, uh, it doesn't, I don't matter to them uh, in, in short and everything. So getting to the point right here, the re- this person is uh, Cadell Johnson. And Cadell Johnson, a lot of you guys up there know, uh, know him, been around. He's won a few other Sweet Stacy Four. Uh, Cadell is a prior Navy diver, uh, was very good at his job. He separated uh, not too long ago. Um, he had some, had some, uh, you know, with his personal issues when he got out and everything. But um, Cadell is a, is a guy that's in Japan. Uh, we talk alike. We're very like-minded, kind of like, kind of like Alan. Very like, very like-minded in our things. He's very, um, very, um, kind of the same kind of composure where very nice, um, very nice, you know, nice style or whatever about him. But, you know, it's not a person that's going to allow you to walk over and cross him and things like that. And that's kind of the same. I mean, the same thing. So we kind of we agree on a lot of things. And again, besides the, the support and everything, um, he's 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 obviously stayed here because he wants to do his thing in Japan. Like we kind of it's, it's kind of weird. And this, this is where we had to respect. Um, he's in, he's here, he's here, he's working here and everything. He's married to a Japanese, uh, wife and, um, his goals are to, to, uh, to grow, to not grow, but to ask, to ascend, uh, the, uh, the drifting ranks and everything. And, and, and he kind of brought up a thing about, you know, being a black guy or whatever. And same thing we mentioned, like we were like a couple of the black guys that are actually doing it on like the, you know, not lo- trying to get more outside of the local area, but, um, do it like that. I mean, there's a thing I don't really harp on a black thing, and he's not harping on it either. But it's just it's just a fact of the matter. It is, it is what it is. Um, and uh, so he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be when I start my program, which I'm already developing and everything. He's gonna be one of my first uh, sponsored drivers of Panku Style. Um, I'll offer various things and say we'll talk about that and everything. It doesn't really matter. Like it'll he'll know what I'm offering. It doesn't really matter. It's not for the public. Um, only people who know what I'm offering and what, you know, what I respect of a driver will be between me and a driver. And every company is the same thing. It doesn't, it, putting that information out there doesn't benefit you. But what I will say, um, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not going to put that thing out there, apply to be a sponsor because I'm not, I'm just not doing that. I'll pick who I want to do. And it's going to come down to pretty much personal relationship because I don't want to get in bed with somebody. Um, you know, um, I don't want to get like, you know, in tangle with somebody who I don't really know. Uh, on a personal level, because they everybody got their motives and their different objectives and things like that, and how they're going to function, how they're going to do things, and um, I'm not going to take money on my pocket and give it to somebody who's not going to um, utilize that to the fullest. Um, you know, certain things like I'll do. This is I'll give you one. I'll give you one because I talked to him about this. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm going to pay for a course his entries into the events. He's going to give me the how many events he's going to do. As a result, you know he's going to be you have to run a substantial size sticker and everything to promote the company and things like that on his uh, on his uh, car on his uh, uniform and things like that, which will be done by Alan their Bridge Motor keeping that circle keeping it in that circle. Um, so. Um, one of the things, you know, like say like you you pay for the guy's entry, he gives you a list and like a firm that you're going to go out there, I'll, I'll afford the money over for him to pay for the event entry. For for example, the way some pl- guys work, like they'll, you know, they'll give you grief if you don't make the event because if they're paying for like a big amount of parts, you're supposed to make that event. Um, things happen and I realized that me being, me being a drifter before and now being a business owner, again, you see things a little bit different. Say I, you know, I pay for his event entry and for whatever reason, he can't make the event because of something that's um, not personal because, again, that he has to be able to, you know, figure that stuff out on his own as far as his job schedule and what he can do and everything. So by paying the event entry, of course, he's going to be able to make the event. But let's say that, um, let's say that you know, he, he, he pays for the event and then, like, he, go, he does, like, some testing right before the event. Like, he has a mechanical issue that, you know, is a legit, legit mechanical issue, not something that's, some, in, in, you know, uh, if he's working on his car, somebody's working on his car. So what I would do instead of being like, oh man, you know, I, I gave you this money or whatever, pretty much what he would do is take the money that I paid for the event entry, just put that money towards, you know, if the, if you can get it back, because some guys, you can't get it back. Um, if you can get the money back for the event, you could put that money towards like, you know, fixing your car. But as far as I know, that doesn't happen. So it'd be kind of a loss, lost cars for both on a money, on a money aspect. But if I afford the cash to him or whatever, for him to pay the event entry and then right before that he submits the entry submits the funds he notices hey man i don't think i'm gonna make this event so hey man go you know your sponsor driver 
can't be something that's going to happen a bunch, but it's just something that, again, I would do, you know, to, to contribute to his. And the guy's already sick. He, you know, rapper Dan, I think he had won, he had won the Pro 2 championship. And then a couple of years later or the year after, um, Sicky decided to pull out a Formula Drift because they just weren't making, for the amount of money they were putting in, or James Evans over there, they just weren't making enough um, money back. And you, that's a business, man. You know, James is coming out of the pocket. That money is for James's family and whatever else he has to do and to keep his business running. So you can't fault him for pulling out. Um, I think, though, Dan pretty much disappeared after that happened. So, I mean, you know, it was a good thing while it lasted. You know, that was all around. I think I don't know how long that thing lasted, but it's like, I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to bring a drama that's just an example of, um, you know, in that situation, Dan was a good, Dan not was, Dan still is a good driver. Uh, but, you know, he had the back in the sickie, he show up, driving things like that. He had the cars that were provided by James Evans. Again, I don't know the specifics. I've been, I, I, I'm not one of those guys that go, I'm not in the States. So I don't know what's going on. I see shit online. These are my friends and everything. I see things out there. I don't, I don't follow it heavily because again, it doesn't really, it doesn't concern or affect me until I'm at, until I actually enter into FD, which I do plan on doing uh, pro two soon. I'm not as popular as the, the Adam LZs and, as far as YouTube stuff and things like that, I've been in the game longer. I'll put my put my skills against anybody out there. Any this like this this whole fad going around about YouTube drifters. Like I was doing that shit before it was even a YouTube drifter fad. These guys are still in elementary school, so I mean that's not even a, that's not even a question. I mean, you want to come drift over here, come drift over here, and we can see how good you are and everything. Because that those big sweeping wide drifts and stuff like that. When you come to Japan, it's a little bit more technical, a um, little bit, a little different style of drifting. And it's the same thing when a lot of Japanese guys, even myself, if I go back to the States, you go drifting at stadiums. Like I ain't drift the bank. I ain't drift the bank with a high power car. Well, I never, I've been on the bank before at uh, Old Dominion Speedway, but I, that was a KA turbo. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at that level. So uh, of actually completing the bank. So I never, if I go back right now, uh, I'll spend like probably a day or two just getting used to drifting on bank entries and stuff like that. It's just not, they don't have uh, oval figure eight tracks here in Japan. Um, So it just, you know, it's just a different thing and everything, different styles. Europe is different than Australia. Australia is different than NZ. NZ is different in the States. The States is different in Brazil. Brazil is different than Germany and all the different places. So um, drift, the drifting is going to, styles are going to be determined based on like, you know, what's around and everything. So kind of like, Went off topic a little bit on that just to kind of get on this topic right here. I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. So I uh, kind of got a, uh, the reason I brought that whole sponsor thing up is uh, for my business, the way I'm going to run things is I'm going to, you know, pick people that I think are good representations of my company. Does has nothing to do with before I even announce this person right here has nothing to do with uh, color has nothing to do with you know religion and things like that. It's just you know from personal talking, the way he support me before I even ask him to, to to support me and everything, the way he looks out and stuff like that and hits me up and they give me hits up on things certain things that uh that might concern me and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, it's just when you pick who you want to represent your company, you should be careful about that. And my thing is I'm not just going, I'm not going to put up their sponsor program just to give somebody 10% off just so they can put a sticker on my car because that's not really support. Um, I, I sold myself 15, 20% to people put all these stickers on my car. Um, again, like I brought up before, when I started my business, um, I, I sent an email out to all my guys like, Hey, I'm about to start a business. So I'm going to be taking a hiatus. And it was like, whatever. I didn't get an email back, which means I'm not even, it doesn't even matter. It's not, it's not, I'm not even, uh, it doesn't, I don't matter to them, uh, in, in short and everything. So getting to the point right here to read this person is, uh, Cadell Johnson and Cadell Johnson. A lot of you guys up there know, uh, know him, been around. He's won a few other sweet states before, uh, Cadell is a prior Navy diver, uh, was very good at his job. He separated, uh, not too long ago. Um, he had some, had some, uh, you know, with his personal issues when he got out and everything, but, um, Cadell is a, is a guy that's in Japan. Uh, we talk alike. We're very like-minded, kind of like, kind of like Alan. Very like mild, very like minded in our things. He's very, um, very, um, kind of the same kind of composure where very nice, um, very nice, you know, nice style or whatever about him. But, you know, it's not a person that's going to allow you to walk over and cross him and things like that. And that's kind of the same, I'm mean, going to say things. So we kind of, we agree on a lot of things. And again, besides the, the support and everything, um, he's, he's, he's obviously stayed here because he wants to do his thing in Japan. Like, we kind of it's it's kind of weird, and this this is where we had to respect. 
um, he's in, he's here, he's here, he's working here and everything. He's married to a Japanese uh, wife and, um, his goals are to, to, uh, to grow, to not grow, but to ask, to ascend, uh, the, uh, the drifting ranks and everything. And, and, and he kind of brought up a thing about, you know, being a black guy or whatever. And same thing we mentioned, like we are like a couple of the black guys that are actually doing it on like the, you know, not lo- trying to get more outside of the local area, but, um, do it like that. I mean, there's a thing I don't really harp on a black thing, and he's not harping on it either. But it's just it's just a fact of the matter. It is, it is what it is. Um, and uh, so he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be when I start my program. I wish I'm already developing and everything. He's gonna be one of my first uh, sponsored drivers of Pinku Style. Um, I'll offer various things and say we'll talk about that and everything. It doesn't really matter. Like it'll he'll know what I'm offering. It doesn't really matter. It's not for the public. Um, only people who know what I'm offering and what, you know, what I respect of a driver will be between me and a driver. And every company is the same thing. It doesn't, it, putting that information out there doesn't benefit you. But what I will say, um, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not going to put that thing out there, apply to be a sponsor because I'm not, I'm just not doing that. I'll pick who I want to do. And it's going to come down to pretty much personal relationship because I don't want to get in bed with somebody. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to get like, you know, in tangled with somebody who I don't really know. Uh, on a personal level because they everybody got their motives and their different objectives and things like that and how they're going to function how they're going to do things and um i'm not going to take money on my pocket and give it to somebody who's not going to um utilize that to the fullest um you know certain things like i'll do this is one, i'll give you one i'll give you one because i talked to him about this yeah I'll, I'll i'm going to pay for a course his entries into the events he's going to give me the how many events he's going to do as a result you know he's going to be you have to run a substantial size sticker and everything to promote the company and things like that on his uh, on his uh car on his uh, uniform and things like that which will be done by alan their bridge motor keeping that circle keeping it in that circle um so uh, one of the things, you know, like say like you you pay for the guy's entry, he gives you a list and like affirm that you're going to go out there, I'll, I'll forward the money over for him to pay for the event entry. For for example, the way some pl- guys work, like they'll, you know, they'll give you grief if you don't make the event because if they're paying for like a big amount of parts, you're supposed to make that event. Um, things happen and I realized that me being, me being a drifter before and now being a business owner, again, you see things a little bit different. Say I, you know, I pay for his event entry and for whatever reason, he can't make the event because of something that's um, not personal because, again, that he has to be able to, you know, figure that stuff out on his own as far as his job schedule and what he can do and everything. So by paying the event entry, of course, he's going to be able to make the event. But let's say that, um, let's say that you know, he, he, he pays for the event and then, like, he, go, he does, like, some testing right before the event. Like, he has a mechanical issue that, you know, is a legit, legit mechanical issue, not something that's, in, in, you know, uh, if he's working on his car, somebody's working on his car. So what I would do instead of being like, oh man, you know, I gave you this money or whatever. Pretty much what he would do is take the money that I paid for the event entry. Just put that money towards, you know, if, if you can get it back, cause some guys, you can't get it back. Um, if you can get the money back for the event, you could put that money towards like, you know, fixing your car. But as far as I know, that doesn't happen. So it'd be kind of a loss, lost cars for both on a money, on a money aspect. But if I afford the cash to him or whatever, for him to pay the event entry and then right before that he submits the entry submits the funds he notices hey man i don't think i'm gonna make this event so hey man go ahead you know your sponsor driver can't be something that's gonna happen a bunch but it's just something that again i would do you know to to contribute to his program is take that money for the event entry put that towards uh getting the car fixed and make it in the next round so it is a business he understands that we talked about it i was going to announce that uh, to him uh, once he got here in Japan and everything, but it's just out there and everything, man. Again, I, 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 I wholeheartedly respect uh, people who grind and do what they got to do to get um, get things done here in Japan because it's a different thing. Uh, we mentioned, we talked about like uh, last night we were on the phone, you know, the difference between being military, being here, being a, uh, you know, being civilian, being sponsored by a Japanese company, being here, being civilian, being sponsored by like your wife and being here, which pretty much is a green card, uh, being a jet teacher, different things like that. And like different, is there, everybody who's a gaijin in Japan, it's a different way you got here. There's not a, there's not a lot of different ways you can get here, but everybody is, who is here, their path are kind of similar. They're like in Japan is very tight on their, um, Japan is very, very tight on their, um, on the immigrant immigration. Like they're, they, they, and we talked again, but we, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about too much because I want to actually bring up some of that and talk because we, we got into it because we had the same sentiments about how when you go to do, go to the visa place, like they're kind of more, they're kind of like, you know, I understand it got to be hard nosed, but when you, you, it should, should be case by case. If you got to do this prior military, you got to do this, that's contributed to your country in multiple ways, uh, you know, 
you, I think you should treat people a little bit different versus somebody who's just coming in off the boat, trying to get a work visa and things like that. Not saying you should treat them with disrespect as well, but you shouldn't treat every guy you hear like we're up to no fucking good, man. And that shit's a, that's one of the things about, you know, Japan that a lot of people don't see. They just see like the Gundams like I brought up last night. They just see like the anime Akibahara. They just see like the, you know, Rapungi. They just see like the glamour and glitz sides of Japan. But Japan is a place like every other place that has issues. Every place on this, on this earth, um, they have uh, issues and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, that, that's just one of the things. Again, if you want to come and live here, be, be sure you're ready to come and live here. I had guys that came and lived here. And they left like within a year. He never contacted me because I told him, "Hey, man, when you come here as a, as an English teacher, you're not gonna be able to do this. You're not gonna be able to get. You're not gonna have this garage. You're not gonna have this badass 180. You're not gonna have all this stuff. You're gonna have. They're gonna pay for your house. Just enough for you to pay, get a little one LDK, which is like a one. My my pretty much my podcast studio is bigger than people houses that they they they're jet their teachers and everything. So it's a rough life. Uh, you can make. You can make uh, meet a lot of people and get your your um, your level up, so to speak. But if um, if uh, yeah, man, everybody's situation not the same. So I some of the one of the you know outside of the Japanese being kind of shitty to foreigners, you got other foreigners who've been here a little bit longer. Feel like they're you know they feel like they're kind of like you know gatekeepers or so. And I, I've had bad run-ins with some some jet teachers and English people, English people who are here who speak fluent Japanese because they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm this fluent in Japanese and this, this now you've been here for 11 years, you should be able to speak this and this and this and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and now, you know, now because I haven't had anybody issue with anybody since I started my business, but I was already doing more in Japan than that person was and had more in Japan than that person was as far as property and things I owned. And I kind of put that on. I'm like, hey, well, so why, why don't you do this? And they go, oh, well, I'm not making enough money. I'm like, all right, well, shut the fuck up then. Like, take those Japanese skills that you're speaking. When you work that job, you, you're tired or whatever, go go do some other shit. Go go meet somebody else. No, but you're going to go home and, and cry about your life to your 1LDK apartment. And uh, then when you get around people, you want to act all fucking prestigious and stuff like that. It's, it, it's something that really irritates me because I hate that. I, 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 I kind of, to be honest, if I meet anybody who's a, a jet teacher or something like that, um, I kind of, I'm already kind of defensive before they, in, until they start talking and like, all right, what well, are they down to dick, whatever, because they do that shit and they get here. And the case in point is, I don't speak Japanese fluent, but I run a Japanese business. I speak enough to run a business, so I must know enough. Yeah, I can't hold a, car, a business conversation. But I got assistance for that until I can get my level up and everything. So everybody's brain is different. The same way you're fluent in Japanese, you're not fluent in fixing all these cars. I am. I can fix anything that comes that has wheels on it and has regular tools that are not proprietary that you got to go through Dell and get and all this shit like that or Packer Bell or whatever. For example, my computer guys up there know stuff like that. Proprietary computers suck. So if, if it's a car and it's not proprietary tools, pr proprietary parts, I can fix it. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, it doesn't matter. As long as that shit's a normal bolt, a normal normal uh, standard, uh, you know, metric or whatever tool, I can fix it. It doesn't matter. Um, so that's what it goes down to, stuff like that. So that was the thing on Cadell. I just want to make to bring that up. He's probably going to be a little bit shocked about that and everything. So just wanted to let him know out there, man, I definitely, um, you know, we talked last night and you, you said some things and, um, and uh, definitely, uh, I appreciate it because in this lifestyle, man, we meet so many people out there that are, that are selfish, self-centered. Um, everybody has a, a, a this human nature to be a selfish. You want to, you, I mean, even, even, you know what I mean? Waking up and doing different things, you do it because you have a different goal. So a uh, selfish is not necessarily a bad thing. Too much selfish is bad, but you, you, you have to put yourself, um, and one, you know, you have to put yourself before others because if you don't, if you're not squared away, you can't help nobody else. Honestly, even with your, your family, it's like, you know, I said selfish is not a bad thing. You kind of do a selfish thing about, hey, I'm going to go go to the gym and work out. Or, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, you know, take some track time and go work out, go to the track and everything. It, it's you, you're, 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 you're doing an act that is for yourself at the track. But that track time or seat time or gym time or something that's going to make you better as a person will transcend and make their life better as well. You can pass those skills on to your kids. You can do whatever. You can, you know... To be honest, you can go longer in the bed with your wife. I mean, that's something I mean, like, I mean, people start getting into sex stuff or whatever. The wife don't want to have sex with her no more. You got you got to look at like it's, your, your wife have, might have an issue, but you got to look at yourself, too. I mean, is the sex enjoyable? Is it boring? You know, what I mean, be, let's be real, man. You know, what I mean, like I, I I'm confident in that in that area and I know I ain't, I'm not lacking. 
And uh, but you know that's being physically fit. You know I mean, that's just one of the things right there. So you physically fit, you can go in the gym, work out for an hour. If you can work out for an hour and throw weights around, then you can do that. So I mean, let's let's just keep it at there. I ain't really, you know, what I mean, it, it is what it is. So I just keep it real right there. So I'm gonna get on to this next topic right here. Um, so since I got the Under Armour in here, and I was just doing some, uh, I was basically what I, before I came in here to do this podcast, I was doing some. Um, I was doing uh, some just some, some jujitsu maneuvers. I got a little jujitsu uh, gym out here and everything, which I'm gonna do a walk around for the guys who are my 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 car my car people guys. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll do a little walk around for my shop before the snow really hits, cause, which which actually is now. So before it gets uh, too snowy, I'll do a walk around in the shop and uh, ch- show you guys that and everything. But since I'm like in a you know I'm in an athletic thing, my my blood's going a little bit for my athletic stuff. Just got kind of got to get back into it and everything. And um, one thing is like. And I talked to my my guy Frank out there and and, and um, Omarty and everything. And well, I, I, like I don't want to misconstrue that. I don't need anybody to get to help me get in shape. It's just cool to be able to train with cool like minded, level headed people who no ego involved. You're just training or whatever. So I mean, I, I played college ball. I was near pros and everything. I didn't make pro uh, football or whatever. But you know, what I mean, that's not you know just staying in shape for the longevity for your kids and everything is a is a very good thing to do. And everything, so it's just pretty cool, cool right there, and everything. So, the um, since I am in the sports mode, one of the things that's coming up actually, probably right now, um, I'm, I actually by the time this comes out, the results will probably maybe be out and everything. So, I'm just talking about a few things right here. I was talking about with somebody else, and that was uh, so we got uh, I think this weekend, tomorrow, or today, I'm in Japan, so it's a little bit different. Uh, Wilder versus Ortiz. Uh, Luis Ortiz versus uh, uh, Deontay Wilder is coming up and everything. My thoughts and opinions on that. So um, everybody's like, you know, you know, it, it's they pretty much think it's going to be a continuation on the last fight and everything. I think, um, you know, like everybody's saying, you know, Ortiz, they don't know how old he really is. Uh, you know, the Cuban stuff, they don't know how the old, older guys really is or whatever. I don't know. I think Ortiz is uh, Cuban or something like that. But he's he's pretty old, apparently. And everything. Well, not apparently, but he is. But he's still, you know, banging around, taking his punches and giving them out and everything like that. So... Um, of course, you know, with Wilder, I mean, my personal opinion is uh, I just think, um, you know, like uh, Wilder was saying in some interviews and everything that um, he mentioned, I uh, watched one recently where he was saying most of the people who fight him, they go all out the first time around because they know he's probably going to knock them out. And then anyway, if you're going to have a rematch with him, he already knows what Ortiz is capable of, you know, unless Ortiz, you know, like one thing is people say a lot about fighters, no fighter is 100%. Went on fight night. They're all they're always already banged up. So, um, in the last fight, maybe Ortiz uh, was uh, was you know a little bit whatever, whatever, whatever. I know Wilder said he had the flu that that last fight and everything, so that went down like that. So the um, you know my personal my personal opinion, I think Wilder's going to take the victory uh, by by another knockout stoppage of some sort. Um, Ortiz. Uh, you know, great fighter of his time and everything, but just I think it's a little bit over his hill for Wilder. And think about Wilder, you know, his name is Wilder. He throws his wild punches. You know, he's two feet out the ground. Teddy Atlas, you know, talks shit about him and everything, but says he got power and everything. Wilder is wild for sure, but the thing about it, like you said, man, uh, in another interview, I watched a good amount of boxing stuff, and he says this in a few different interviews, um, you know, a person could be good for, you know, 12 rounds, whatever, whatever, whatever. It only takes him two seconds or 20 seconds or whatever to knock somebody out. And or two seconds or something like that. So, you know, I mean, he could be a, a shitty fight or whatever. Then he surprises you, come out of nowhere, and uh, knocks you out and things like that. So, um, I think the fight's going to be, um, like I say, by the time this podcast comes out, the 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 the, Vic, the, the results will be in. Uh, but I, I'm going to go ahead and pick straight up Wilder uh, for the for the victor of the fight based on you know my own, uh, you know, just a younger fighter, and he's, uh, you know, again, people talk trash about him being wild, but he's 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 always, he constantly always growing. And uh, getting better as a fighter and everything. And so, uh, one thing you can't, one thing you know, I don't, I'm not a fanboy of anybody. I respect people's grind no matter what they do. One thing about him, man, is you know, you know, the reason why he got into the game, you know, did it for his daughter and everything. And then, you know, I mean, he keeps it real, man. You don't, you know, he's the type of person where you just, again, I don't know him. Maybe his facade is different on, on when the camera's on than it was off, but I just don't think so. He's some people like that, you know, and, and a lot of people say that even about myself, which is why I respect him. Um, you're going to get it like, I mean, I don't, you know, I kind of, you know, I smile a little bit more on the podcast or whatever when I'm on YouTube because nobody wants to see somebody that's monotone and somebody that just don't have no personality. So, yeah, I give a little bit more in the camera. But generally, when you when you meet me, I'm the same guy. I don't I don't play around and mess around a lot. 
you know, a person, not a jokester guy. So some people, they don't know about when they meet me, they're like, they're like, oh, they're throwing jokes around. I'm like, if it's funny, I'll laugh. If it's not funny, I'm not going to laugh. Plain, plain and simple. So some people are just like weird, man. You talk online, but you meet in person, they're just weird. And I get, I like, I shut down because I'm like, why are you being weird? Be fucking normal. Um, so, you know, again, you know, Dante Waddle doesn't strike me as somebody that's, um, that's, uh, you know, that's keeping it being phony and everything. He, he says what he's going to do and he does it and everything. Um, he don't talk about like, he don't talk how, you know, about how he's the best at this and best at that and everything. Uh, but, um, I, I see him winning this fight uh, pretty easily. Uh, younger fighter, uh, constantly growing where Louis, where Luis Ortiz is older fighter setting his ways is going to do the same thing he did the last fight straight up and down. So I think it's going to be a, a knockout. I always call it on my, 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 my prediction. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, if it, Straight up prediction, I would say Wilder by knockout or stoppage in about the fourth round. So that, that's my prediction on the fight. So let's see if it goes if it goes true or whatever. So my next one is another uh, is uh, Rui, uh, Rui, Andy Ruiz versus uh, Joshua. Andy Joshua is coming. Not Andy, say Andy Joshua. Ant, I say Anthony <laughs> Anthony Joshua is uh, coming up to rematch it, uh, for that. Uh, checked out some stuff and everything. One thing to note is the the, the uh, Ruiz looks the same as he looked in the last fight. A little bit slimmer, a little bit dash slimmer, while uh, Joshua looks like way smaller, but still a big dude, man. Still tall, still muscular and everything, but he cut a lot of weight for this uh, for that fight, man. Um, so um, uh, everybody's, um, you know, uh, when when the thing went down with the, the last fight between, you know, Joshua, his guy being busted for the, for the uh, PEDs, and uh, Ruiz stepping in and everything, um, you know, this look, I mean, you know, Joshua is a guy that has respect and everything, and he's handled that loss pretty well. Um, he hasn't made a bunch of excuses. Uh, Ruiz just looks, I mean, he just looks like an unassuming guy. So the people who don't know him, I, I personally did not know who Andy Ruiz was. Never seen him. Never seen him into that Joshua fight. So, I mean, you know, but like respect and respect this dude after he won. I'm like, all right, well, let me check this dude out like everybody else did. Went on YouTube like, dude, Evander Holyfield saying this guy has great hands. All these guys saying, dude, Ruiz has good hands. He's he doesn't. He's kind of like a um, he's kind of like a. I don't want to say Butterbean, but he's kind of like uh, who is it? The guy at the UFC, Roy Nelson, who you know had the Burger King sparring, the big belly with knocking dudes out and everything, and stuff like that. Um, you know, body. Everybody wants to be muscular and stuff like that, but muscles don't that don't muscles don't equal good results in some cases being bigger with skill does help for me it helps the jujitsu being a bigger guy but knowing when to use the muscle knowing when not to use the muscle and i can roll for 30 minutes straight at my size because i'm not powering i'm not i'm not like this like squeezing everything and and, and you got to relax you know i first got into jujitsu like i was doing it too much stuff like that so um ruiz and uh you know joshua i think it's gonna be a go a little bit like the same naturally ruiz Sorry about that. Naturally, Ruiz. Uh, sorry, guys. I was drinking a bunch of uh, some energy sport, not energy drinks, but some sports stuff. Uh, Ruiz naturally has the mental, the mental uh, advantage going in. Um, a lot of people say maybe there was some stuff going on with Joshua, like some vertical stuff, or there was some stuff in the locker room going on before that fight, and uh, it, it led to the thing. But I just when I from what I seen personally, man, it just. He wasn't there mentally, and everybody, it doesn't matter how strong you are, how big you are, man. If you're not there mentally, whoever's mentally stronger tonight's going to win. And we, we just got knocked down first, and I thought when he got knocked down, all right, well, this thing is done. He's going to knock him down again. But when we just got knocked down, it's like, again, man, he woke up, man. He woke up like everybody else was saying out there, saying, not kind of like regurgitating stuff I, I, I watched, but it's true because I agree with it. After he got knocked out, man, he just like, fuck this, I'm going for broke. And that's one of those moments, man, where like, you know, and, and when you get presented with a life chance, like that's one of those things people say you're lucky. Lucky, I don't believe in luck, but, you know, in a way people say, oh, well, you know, luck is kind of like where preparation meets like the, the what was it, preparation meets the situation or whatever. Ruiz trained to train to train to train, got looked over, got looked over, and then he had that mo he had that moment and he took it and he seized it and he knocked the dude out. And like you said, you know, at the end of the thing, man, he told his mom, "We ain't, we we good now, we, you know, the money's good. He's struggling. He's he's a he's a, you know, guy, like guys think everybody guys think everybody who laces up those gloves, they fight UFC, boxing, whatever, they're making Conor, Conor McGregor money, John Jones money, Floyd Mayweather money. Everybody's not making that money, man. Um, so you know, um. These guys, you know, it's a life and death thing too. I mean, I, a lot of people don't, you know, some 26-year-old uh, female just died recently. 
and uh, from injuries or whatever. Um, guys are passing, don't getting heat stroke from uh, you know the dropping the weight to train for the for the fight, and that, that helped. That hurts a lot of people too. So this this uh, fighting thing, fighting game is not a game. Like I mean, you know, nothing. I play football, but like part people say, you don't play boxing, you don't play MMA, you don't play you don't play these type of things. I mean, and not saying I mean people who've died in football, people who've died in other different sports as well, uh, as a result of injuries. But boxing. Is is one of that thing you're in there you're in there with another person. It's just you and him inside of the ring, inside of the cage, inside of the octagon, or whatever. Um, so you know, I mean, every every fight could be somebody's last. It's a little bit different. So these guys, you know, going there sustain a lot of brain damage and things like that. And, and CTE, everybody's talking about it now. The CTE things, the brain trauma thing, is not a new thing. But you know, um, I just don't, you know, in relation to Joshua, Joshua doesn't have to fight anymore, believe it or not, because he makes he makes a lot of money. He's he's young, so he's not going to quit yet. But you know, I mean, that's one of the things, man. You know, when you make a lot of money, even though Joshua's, you know, don't know him, but he seems like a humble dude. You know, what I mean, a dude that he could just walk in right now and I could hold, have a conversation with him and not be weird. For him and not be weird for me to seem like that type of approachable guy, which I like about him. I like both fighters. I mean, I don't really dislike or like. I'm not. I'm not that type. I'm not a fan, um, really, a follower of anybody. I respect guys. I do watch it, but I'm not like, oh man, win because I don't have anything on it. You know, if he wins, he wins. I just want to see a good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. I think Joshua is going to bring some different skill sets. He's dropped that weight, so maybe his win's going to go along. It seemed like he was doing a lot more cardio because he was just tired. Man. He was tired, and I've been there, man. I've been there where, like, you know, you watch it on TV, like, oh, man, he can go deep. When you're tired and people screaming at you, like, you just can't do it. Your body can't do it. I've had jiu-jitsu. My, my last jiu-jitsu tournament, I got a bronze out of it. One of, the, the, one of those medals where I got a bronze, I didn't train for almost a year and a half, and I went – I, didn't, I went from not training and not rolling into a competition, and I, and I got the bronze. Um, so uh, I was a match with a guy, man, and um, I, I, well, I, I was trying to keep my undefeated streak in competition. I didn't. I lost by points. Um, the guy, I just was tired, man. I was tired, and the, the guy was training. You could tell he was training. He didn't, like, maul me anything, but I just lost by points. So I pretty much just held on, held position. I think he he, he just won by points, man. So it's one of those things, man, where you're, my, you're, you're on the mat. You're like, man, I could do this. I could do that. But you just physically can't do it. And you can do it, but it's like, you know, it's a mental thing. Again, because I've been to, I've been in situations where I've been really tired and I pushed through. I made it happen. But that particular day, it just, if your mindset is not – you know, there to help your body when your body's failing, you're just going to fail. So he just was, ga- Joshua was just gassing that fight, man. He, like I said, he turned his back on the referee at the eight count, things like that. And um, I don't think he quit, but you, could, you, it's an argument there that he did. You could see when, you know, he got knocked down. He like laughed when he was getting, he was like kind of smiling when he got up, more like in a disbelief, like, I can't believe this is happening. Or it's like kind of like, oh man, this is finally over type thing. Cause people do take a dive. I don't think he t- took a dive. Ruiz just fucking loaded up on him and, and landed those shots, got up inside him, and he shocked him with his hand speed and his power, and he just wasn't ready for that. Joshua, from the fights I watched, Joshua is not like a brawler. He's like a, a technical fighter, a tactician and everything, kind of puts his shots pretty good, but Ruiz didn't let that guy breathe, and he just got up inside of him and everything and just, like, you know, shocked the world, man. Um, he shocked me. I was like, wow. You know I mean? I didn't expect, I mean, this dude – was Reese is about what five ten, I think maybe six foot or whatever. Josh was is, is is a tall dude, man. And uh, you know, Ruiz just got up in him and, and, and laid him and put him down. You know, that was a that was that was shocking, man. And it wasn't like a, he just not he just like that was a convincing win. That was a very convincing win uh for for uh Ant for Ruiz. So Anthony, I'm 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 excited to see how what changes he made and what's gonna happen. Um you know, maybe he took him, you know, and that's one thing even about him being humble is that still you got humble is one thing. You're out of you're out of projection of people, but your inner thing, all everybody who fights, they know that they have you got to believe when you're doing that, that you're the, you, you're good. And you can't you and nobody can beat you and stuff like that, because if you don't do that, um, there is a, 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 a portion of fighting sports. I myself have that people have seen it. I, I see it because I watched their face. There's a switch. Even if you're doing your normal operation, you can be talking normal, being jovial, being nice. Somebody says something or some issue, some situation happens. There's no, for me, there's no thinking about it. I switch. 
if I see some danger happening to me or somebody around me, a family person or whatever, I switch it to react or whatever. Some people got to think about oh, what I'm going to do. What I, uh, you know, no, for me is is bam situation reaction. Um, it's something I, you can't train it. Um, you can learn it probably, but it's just in you or it's not. And when you're a fighter and things like that, you can't be in there like, ah, man, what do I do? And when guys, they're all fighters, they do that. They're like, ah, man, I don't want to, I don't want to go and everything. And then the, the other guy goes, gets off on you. He wins. So you, then the next time you fight, like, fuck, I'm not gonna let nobody get off on me or whatever. Per, case in point, um, one guy who's blown up recently, well, not blown, well, not, I mean, I knew about him actually. But the, the casual guys is uh, uh, in MMA is uh, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, Masvidal was like, you know, hey, man, I could have won this by that. And then he was like, man, why the fuck am I thinking like this? Let me just knock these dudes out, do what I got to do, and and leave it. There's no doubt. And, and that's kind of one way. People like that I like, man, because even with, you know, racing, drifting, or whatever, man, when you if you're doing it and if you're wasting your time out of your where you could be sitting there watching Twilight, you know, in the corner or whatever on Netflix. If you're gonna waste your energy, expel your energy, man. Put all, put it all out there. Make it happen because those are life changing moments. Um, you don't know who's watching you. You don't know results. And those that one thing again, like like uh, um, Ruiz, he went all in. He got knocked down. He didn't like fold and everything. When Joshua knocked down, he got up, dusted himself off, and knocked Joshua down two or three times or whatever. I can't remember, man. But you know, I mean, that changed his life forever, man. Like I mean, even if he does go in and lose his next fight again. He's not gonna. He's not gonna lose that fight and go away. He's gonna. He's now. He's on the map. He's gonna get that. You know. He's gonna fight maybe Tyson Fury. He's gonna fight maybe Wilder or whatever. He's he's a household name now. He's gonna get those big checks. He's been champion. Once you become that champion, you're in that next level. And the next level, like people like just can write you off. So he'll be able to do enough fights to make enough more money to support his family for life. And, and again, he's changing his family life. He's changed his life. He's changed. You know, people who life that you know that. You know, he's made a, a big, a major difference, man. Just by, again, I kind of go back to that point where, like, you know, uh, being selfish or whatever. He's, he's, he's taking the time away from his family. He's done a lot of different, a lot of different things that put himself in that situation to actually pre to perform in that situation well. So, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, he's done, he's done those selfless acts. Well, selfish acts. Uh, to to get himself at a level to be able to perform that night when he beat Joshua and everything changed his life. So you know, um, as far as picking um, who's going to win, uh, based off again, you know, I just go you just go based off of the value of what you've seen the last time. Uh, again, I respect Joshua. Um, you know, Joshua was fighting the people he's fighting over in Europe. Not saying I could beat Joshua. You know, I'm not a boxer. I'm not. A, you know, that, that's you know that's one thing I'll make keep it real. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm skillful where I'm skillful at. Now let's say if we grapple. Or we do some kicking. I think I, I could beat Joshua. I mean, that's a different thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm. I don't know how strong he is, but I'm a strong guy myself. I'm a big guy. I'm 230 something pounds away myself, five ten or whatever. He's taller than me, so he got the the range and stuff like that. But if he straight boxes, of course, off the rip, Joshua was gonna beat me. But I mean, if we grapple or do anything other than boxing, I got a chance. Straight up and down. That's how it works. So that's why he mix it up and everything. So I'm going to get my guy Omari over there to get me those boxing skills up so maybe I have a chance with Joshua. But nah, man, like that's the thing you got to respect. I'm not one of those people who, you know, I respect. I'm an athlete. I play multiple sports. I know how it is. I'm on the field. You got all these dudes sitting in the stands talking shit, talking about who's going to do what and everything, and they ain't never fucking throwing a punch or took a hit or knocked somebody out in their life. So, I mean, so if I got to pick based off the last showing, what I've seen from Joshua, um, what – I know something, you know, mentally stuff happens. He's, he's human. Um, we oddly again, I'm going to pick Ruiz again to win his fight. And I mean, it, it's kind of hard because, you know, I mean, I, I like both of these guys, man. You want both of these guys to win. They're both stand up guys. Again, I don't know him personally, but I just think again about if, if both Joshua or Ruiz walked in this room right now, I'll be able to have a normal conversation with these guys and everything. So, um, I don't see Ruiz changing. He, he's going to do the same thing that got him here. Um, you know, but he knows a blueprint. He knows how to beat uh, Anthony Joshua based on what was pre presented to him the last time and everything. So, again, my pick for the fight would be uh, Ruiz. Uh, if Ruiz wins the fight, I think it will probably be by decision. Um, the only way I see uh, if uh, – because he's a champion, you know you got to convincingly beat the champion to get that belt. If uh, Anthony wins, I think uh, – you know, like I said, my pick for the fight is Ruiz. But if Anthony wins – I think Anthony wins by um, just, he has to knock Ruiz out straight up because uh, he, he again he has to he has to convincingly take that belt from Ruiz man in the UFC and things like that uh, when you're champion the champion if it's going to be decision 
the champion almost always is going to get the nod because he's a champion unless the guy did a lot to uh to uh to win that decision which you know you got to the dude has to be barely like standing up and has to be bloody and beat the hell up and the points and all stuff like be out there so again i take uh, ruiz for the uh, ruiz versus joshua fight and again i take wall i take wilder over ortiz because just or Ortiz is older and Wilder has that power and he's just getting better. Um, so that's the two two ones that, that are coming up and everything, heavyweights and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Then um uh to wrap up, wrap up, because I got about um, close to an hour here. Uh, to wrap up. Um one thing I'm gonna talk talk about is uh the my last I'm not talk about but the, my last uh last uh let me take a drink right here real quick. So uh, what I'm gonna wrap up on right here is 2020 is upon us, man. This year's year's been fast. It's been another good year for me. I'm in business, so I'm alive. My family's doing good, and everybody's good to go. For me, it's a good year, man. Everybody, you know, with this, this new year, new me bullshit, man. You're gonna be the same fucking person you are, 1979, man. Um, you you're gonna be who you are. I think my my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend belief. People generally become who they're gonna become between the ages of 16 and 18. After 18, you know, t- you know, 19 to 24, you make a little bit of modifications to yourself. But after generally 25 years old, you're just who you are, man. Um, I am who I am. I'm a very confident person. I don't let anybody come in my area and fuck shit up. I have general respect for people and everything. And um, that's just, you know, I'm not saying I do everything right. I don't, I don't, I don't make a lot of mistakes because I sit back and I watch other people, uh, other people around me make mistakes. So. There's nothing in life saying you got to go through life making mistakes and fucking up everything. The more mistakes you make, the more setbacks you got. The more setbacks you have, the more it's going to stop you from getting to where you want to go. So, yeah, don't, don't, it's not nothing cool about, oh, man, I fucked up. Or, oh, man, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to get drunk and shit. And the next day I can't get up and make this meeting or do this meeting or whatever, 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 whatever. That's your decision. You make your decisions. I'll make my decision. So, with this 2020 coming around, yo, my new New Year's goals. There's, I don't do this New Year, New Me. I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing since. I mean, again, I've kind of, I, I honestly hold her wholeheartedly believe I've been who I am since the age of 18. That's just, I feel that way. Um, after I left, uh, you know, college, high school, actually, I would say earlier than that, man. Um, I, uh, you know, I had some situations where I got held. I, I, I was sick in first grade. Got held back, so I repeated first grade at a new school, and I went from East. East Baltimore to West Baltimore. Then when I got to uh, uh, middle school, I failed sixth grade, and so all those people like that getting left behind, man. That that's that 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 alone getting left behind and seeing the senior people next year and an embarrassment of, of failing. Like I failed. There was no other. I mean, I was I was helping my grandmother. Um, she was really sick and everything, so I was staying with her, but I was using that as an excuse not to go to school. And we would drive around and do everything. She was letting me drive our car. I didn't have license and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. One of the reasons I stayed out. But I failed because I got I was in school fucking around, man. I met all, you know, sixth grade, uh, meeting all these new people, girls, getting into girls and stuff like that. And um, I failed. Like nobody else failed but me. My mom, you know, there was some stuff going on at the house and everything. Eventually, my mom went, you know, when she flies over here. There was some stuff going on at the house, and it, it, it was I needed a we needed a I needed a break away from the house. So I was like, all right, let me go. Grandma was a little bit ill, and in that situation happened. She's like, all right, go stay with your grandmother. So my mom actually didn't know. I mean, you know, saying like, my mom has been, you know, my mom is responsible for like again who I am. She it wasn't that she was being the best. She was going through her own shit with her with her ex husband at the time. And, um, you know, she had a lot of stuff on her plate and everything, and she pulled through it. My mom got her college degree. So my mom's actually an educator. My mom's actually a teacher. So it's, you know, if she knew what was going on, she definitely been on my ass, but she didn't know. I mean, she she kind of thought I was good to go. So after that happened, she was on my ass about it, you know, like get, really got on me that next year it was that I came back home and she was like checking everything, checking everything. And then from that point, that second, my second sixth grade year, from that point on, I pretty much made the honor roll every quarter from sixth grade up to 12th grade, except for maybe, I would say a good, maybe, maybe three or four times, maybe. And I made the honor roll every time after that. I started getting the who's who letters in the mail. I got a, I got an academic scholarship at the University of Maryland. And that's how I got to Maryland and everything. So, you know, I mean, that, that, so people say, oh, man, your mom wasn't involved. She was the reason I got my academic $90,000 scholarship to University of Maryland and things like that. So my mom was definitely involved in everything. It was just, I failed. Your parents could be there, but you're going to do whatever you got to do. So, um, 
kind of went on a long ass rant about that, you know, stuff out there. For, my, for us, my goals is just, again, to continue to grow my family, make sure my family is good to go. That's going to be my priority always. Um, the guys out there that are watching everything, you got to know. I'm gonna, I'll say it straight up and down. I'll say it to your face. I mean, some some customers I get a little bit, you know, a little person with as we talk. We do business after we got a good rapport. And uh, they come to here enough, you know, I kind of get, get to know who I'm dealing with and everything because they're investing into my family, investing into my company, which is investing into my family, which I'm very appreciative of. So I kind of I kind of relax a little bit and kind of be a little bit more human, depending on the thing. If you're coming in for a one time job, you're going to get a one time service respect, but you're not really heavily investing into my company. So I'm gonna keep it real like that. That's how it just goes that way. So. My thing is to continue to grow my business to, make, to at the end of the year kind of look back on the numbers, see where I see where I lost money yet, see where I gained money yet. Continue to do that and make it better for the next year. And this overall progression, man, it's just um everything that I, that I set up to do. My my thing for 2020 is I want to get back um not get back not want to get back, but going to get back into the um you know more uh you know some more martial arts and things like that because. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, my, a lot of my anger issues and stuff like that range from not releasing those things, doing jujitsu, doing martial arts, doing boxing and everything that like me, I have to be physical. If I'm not physical in multiple different ways, I get angry and everything. So it's just, it's just not a good thing. I shouldn't be taking it out on my customers and things like that. Um, I don't take anything on a customer, but some customers do push me to the edge where like, dude, this is, you, you, you're not, some people just think that it, because they're giving you that money, man, they could just do whatever the fuck they want to do. And that's not the case, man. There's rules, regulations. If you deal with a business that's like, if you deal with an unorganized business that don't track shit, don't email, don't, don't do stuff that, yeah, you can get angry as a customer because, but when you're dealing, when you, when you're uh, dealing with that kind of business, when you're dealing with a business that tracks stuff, email you, got calendar things, give, make, gives you a quote on paper, not some shit written on a napkin. Gives you a quote and do things like that. And I go out of my way to do stuff. And when a customer acts like a little dickhead, like that shit pisses me off, man, because I'm going on my way to help you and you're going to be a fucking jerk. That really irritates me and know the fucking customers that I always write in my book. I'm running a single business. So no, that's not always right. That moniker is some bullshit that somebody made up to kind of get people to sheep people into how things are supposed to be. But hey, man, I'm running this. This is my money. And I mean, right is right. Wrong is wrong. For I mean, 99% of the time, I'm, I, I'll say 100% of the time because I'm going to say that as a business owner, I'm not wrong because I've put everything out there. I've never, I've never made a mistake like, ah, oh, this should have been that because I analyze everything. That's why, again, you don't get the uh, quotes when you come to me on a spot because there's a lot of different factors. I want to sit down and go through all those factors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, this. And go through all those factors. That way, when I give that stuff to you as a customer, it's done. So that's the thing going into the, to the new year. I just want to make sure you know I'm still improving my customer service. Buy the customers more coming, more customers coming, more money coming in. I'm able to pay debts off. I'm ready to get more stuff in the shop and actually make um you know make it more uh more. The more I can get in, the more I, more support I can get, the more I can offer. If I'm not getting support from local guys, how the fuck am I going to support people? You can't you can't support. If nobody's, you know, it takes money to do that. So if I'm just doing a bare minimum, you're gonna get the I mean, you're not gonna get the bare minimum service, but as far as what I can offer, you know I mean, as far as you know, getting a dyno in the shop for when winter time comes, I don't have to go to a Mori to to SSI to do dyno stuff. Um, I do all my tuning on the track, which I'm gonna do a session on that and show guys why I do that. I prefer to do it on the track. Um, I don't care for dynos. It's like kind of running on a treadmill, it's not real. Um, there's a time form and a need form, but that's not my thing. So um, you know, getting more equipment and getting a dyno. Dyno at the base, a good dyno is about 30K uh, before shipping. And then, um, you know, you're looking at like weight and balance things. The weight and balance skill, I've been talking about this for a while. I actually got that. It's coming coming up soon. And a few other things. So my goal for 2020, again, this is my, 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 my main thing for me. Everybody's different. Is just continue to grow for my family, continue to grow for my business. That'll that'll transcend into other things where I can help other people out, you know, get in, get in contact with family I haven't talked to for a long time and things like that. So that's just my thing, man. I ain't got no long list of shit. Like, I mean, I already got, I mean, I have a list of things in my mind, but again, you got to be careful how you put things out there. You got to time your stuff as a business stuff. Well, again, I was talking to um, a buddy last night about a business thing and his ideas getting stolen, names and stuff getting stolen and things like that. Um, you got to be careful again who you talk to when you get put stuff out there. You got to strategi strategically put things out there and see how people's going to react. One recent thing is with uh, Elon Musk uh, revealing that the truck that to me is ugly as hell. That's my personal opinion. Um, you know, I don't have stock in Tesla. I think that thing's ugly as hell. It's hideous. Uh, but, you know, when you look at it and stand back, like, I mean, everybody's saying he's now he's trolling people, or whatever, with that truck or whatever, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter what he's doing. He that dude is smart as hell. 
Trust me, he know he has a handle on what the hell he's doing. He thinks way like some people like that. They're thinking, uh, you know, they got their they're on move eight or nine while you're still on move two, and that's how I do, man. You know, what I mean, I run my life like I'm not just thinking about what I'm not thinking when I even when I talk to you and you're in my presence, I'm 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 giving you my undivided attention, but I have the ability to think about what other stuff. Um, Depending on how engaging the conversation is, I mean, I'll be more engaged and invested into you at that time. But if the conversation is lame and you're like this, oh, well, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do that. In between you, like thinking about what you want to do, I'm already thinking about six, seven cars that I'm going to be building down the line and everything. So that's just a little bit different about how I operate, how I run and everything. Um, skill sets are different. Everybody's mind is different. Things work different ways and things like that. So um, let me see. I, I keep sitting up like this, man. to working my posture. I'm like hunched over and shit like that. So even while, I, even while I'm talking to you right now, thinking about, hey, man, I'm hunched over and shit. So again, it's like I'm the shit's just coming out of my mouth, coming out of my mind, and I still could think about other things and everything. So just keeping posture. Um, one thing for sports and everything, keeping the posture, jujitsu, posture always, all this, all this stuff. But position before submission and things like that. So yeah, it's going to be good. So that's going to be, you know, episode number 32. We did a little bit over an hour, stuff like that. So I'm going to wrap up, get out of here. So again, uh, be sure to Pinko Style podcast at pinkostyle.com to send your questions or um you can send them if you're on instagram you can send them on instagram just right on, send me in a message and send your questions there or just post them up there and everything on the next post i put so again thank you guys for tuning in this is going to be uh donnie signing off from solid japan pinko style pinko style podcast number 32 and i'm gonna see you guys later peace ladies and gentlemen now i'm introducing one up he's defeated some of the top world fighters to earn this title and now stands before you as your new world fighting champion! Round one. <laughs> Level one, one, my skills don't bring the fighters on. Even when the spits of the soul center for a fighter song. Whenever guaranteed you choose a fighter, spirit will grow. Slowly emerging from the concrete, just like a Brazilian rose. The fatal fury hit the streets of rage. And quickly rose to stardom with my mortal combat reputation. Johnny Cage, the money, the cars, and the ladies. Yeah, I had it all. Never thought I would ever come see the curtain call. Next thing I know, my ego came and took a final bite. I lost it all. Man, it's time to get this final fight. The depths of the jungle, to the pyramids in Seclusion. I spent years, blood, sweat, and tears by the illusion. All to become the greatest ever. Ever, ever? My bonds are severed so that forever I can protect whomever or whichever. And whenever battle comes my way without any challenges whatsoever. This year, the agenda. Yeah, I gotta be mean. Rush back to glory to take over the scene. Rhymes outspoken. I leave your ears broken. Down, right. Fierce Hadoka, it's the underdog agenda Above all of these other things They can't understand Cause they some underlings The underdog Time is gone after the time is passed for the training, I grown through the mind of a veteran. More skills at disposal and so kind of make me a better man. Swept up, I hit the streets to find my clone and leave a burn quick. When they saw my return, they had spun so fast like spinning bird kick. It's all a game at this point. I spit some yoga flames. They tear both guards, so I fatally wound them in their body frames. They muttered in silence. Where the hell are you? I replied. Merciless Sunday's dog that freaking found you. Up this phone, I had to make a killer choice. Hit the dial back only to hear familiar voice. Did you take it? I'll go ahead and answer that with a uh, no, they didn't. You've been gone for years, one of them. I now own every money, every day in the city. I still have the lies you caused me. I'll go ahead and tell you what you need to do. You really need to go ahead and take your ridiculous self. First off, you took my money, you took my women, you took my car. This here? The agenda. Yeah, I gotta be done. mean. Runs back to glory to take over the scene. Rhymes outspoken. I'll leave your ears broken. Down, right, fierce, the dope It's the underdog agenda. Above all of these other things, they can't understand. Cause they some underlings. We request that you take a rest from excessive head nodding. The music will resume shortly after this intermission. Thank you. Um, who is this guy in the elevator? Uh, this is a really long elevator ride. You might take my bag. No, lady, I'm not going to steal your purse, all right? Just chill out. Uh, did you just read my mind? Freaking people these days. Fifth floor, please.
With the instinct of a killer and the mind of a genius Trace that calling covers the ground which lies between us A castle in the sky with a sound which said the tower zone I reached into my bag and leveled up with one of my power zones The melee and the brawl which was sure to see me smash the best Made me sweat my technique like martial law when I had to smash the rest So I went sneaky like a guide and I'm drumming up a storm of bringing the shock and like I'm riding Body after body, elixirs and a potion Burst my way through the final door with a super motion But the last and final boss It wasn't my evil ego A training partner growing up Betrayed by my own amigo What are you doing here? It was you all along? You don't know how to use your powers Such a waste We can be kings amongst men And rule the world Give up this righteous act and join me Together we will be unstoppable Dude, you're out of your mind don't you remember anything that Master taught us? I do. And that is why he's a fool. I'll kill you like I killed him. You son of a fight! This here, the agenda of yeah, the gotta be done. done. Gotta kill my homie no matter how the story is smudged. Rhymes unspoken, I'll leave the space stupid. Right down to the middle. So you can the underdog agenda above all of these other things did and know that this is what the freaking future brings. The underdog. Finish him, you fool. You could have been gone. You win. Well done. Try the game on another difficulty level for additional features.